Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming. This is a very important time, and I know you know that or you wouldn't be here. We have been running down a rumor uh, for some time now. It is rumors that there is an election coming. <laughs> and we can now confirm that it is coming. It's here Tuesday. It means it's right on top of us. And this election, like so many elections, has so much at stake. I'm, I'm worried for the future of our country under Commander-in-Chief Obama. Um, we don't want that to happen. On this Tuesday, we have to elect a man who has put his country first all of his life. We've got to elect John McCain. There are many other races that are important <coughs> across the country. Races the United States Senate, races for the United States House of Representatives, races right here in Minnesota for the state legislature. And so much hangs in the balance. I've been teasing my friend Norm for years. When the Republicans were in the majority, I used to say all the time, that darn Senate, they can't ever get anything done. <laughs> and now, with Majority Leader Harry Reid, I say, thank God the Senate can't get anything done. <laughs> yeah. Should catastrophe occur, and there be 60 Democrats in the Senate, we are, off, we are in for a ride which we don't want to see. There's nothing stops. Not even speed bump out there. With President Obama and Majority Leader Reid with filibuster-proof Senate and Speaker Pelosi, that's a ride we only want to imagine. Nope. There's a lot of a lot at stake here. Um, Norm and I have been traveling around today. He started, uh, I think, this morning over in Woodbury or someplace. I started a campaign with Eric Paulson this morning. We first got together in Rosemount uh, several hours ago, and, and Norm is moving on north and west, or I forget which direction you're going uh, after this. Uh, well, we're, we're pushing it hard. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I, because they're standing behind me, I, I almost forgot to mention the two terrific uh, state reps. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It is true that Norm and I really do, in this case, plan to ride in on their coattails. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, I've. Uh, the routine here that we have developed unofficially is that I say welcome and say a couple of comments and then here in a minute I'll introduce Norm and he'll actually give the real speech. But one of the issues that's come up, and he's been, he's been waving this today, I'm sure he wants to talk about it and will, uh, the, uh, the Second Amendment, that's an NRA piece. But I wanted to tell a story uh, about Al Frank. I know that makes you shudder. Is it a short story? It lets you know something about Al Franken that I think is important when it comes to the Second Amendment. Last year, for reasons that are hard to explain, I was hunting in western Minnesota with a couple of my colleagues from the House. Colin Peterson, or as you know, from western Minnesota, um, and Leonard Boswell from Iowa, two Democrats. I was there to provide Republican cover for what was otherwise a Democrat event. <laughs> and Al Franken showed up. And I was introduced to, to Al for the first time. Uh, Al had his, his blaze orange pheasant hunting uh, jacket on. He was getting ready to go pheasant hunting. And there were boxes of ammunition set out on a, on a table. And Al reached over and grabbed a box of, of shotgun shells. And I looked at him and I said, Al, I said, are you hunting with a 20 gauge? And he said, well, well, I don't know. Let me look. And he reached in his pocket and pulled, pulled out a 12 gauge shell. I said, well, you just might want to switch those boxes around. <laughs> now, this is a guy who pretends, pretends to be a supporter of the Second Amendment. And it is indicative of something that we have seen throughout this campaign, the presidential race and the Senate race and, and House races, 
that deception is the rule. And that's putting it as kindly as I can put it on the other side. We don't seem to care about truth. My opponent, for example, is running an ad on television attacking me for voting for the, quote, bailout, which he says he would have voted for. Now, he doesn't tell you that in the ad that he would have voted for. It, it is just dishonest. And it is the rule rather than the exception in what we're seeing here. So, big day on Tuesday. I know that you all are going to vote. Some of you may have already voted. And if so, I'll presume to say thank you for voting for us. <laughs> You're going to vote. We're not worried about you. It's your neighbors that we're a little bit worried about. I actually know some of your neighbors. And uh, I know that you're going to need to encourage them to get out and vote. <coughs> Some of them are getting ready to head to deer camp because they know the difference between 20 gauge and 12 gauge. They're getting ready to go to deer camp. You need to get them to make sure that they vote. People who live across town, people who live in other towns, you've got to get them to vote. It is so important. We've raised all the money, we've spent all the money, we're traveling around, we're working as hard as we can. Paul and Joe and Norm and me, we're, we're doing as much as we can. Now we need you. I'm personally hoping that the mayor is going to get out there and start going door to door for us. And everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you mean. We need you. Well, I told you my job was to, uh, just to say a welcome and thank you, and then I'm, I'm going to introduce somebody to you that I know you really came to hear. Before I do, I want to say this. It is absolutely critical that we get a senator in office who knows which justices that are appointed to confirm and which ones not to confirm. Who knows the difference between a 12-gauge and a 20-gauge and knows what the Second Amendment really means. Someone who knows the value of life. Someone who is a serious legislator not a professional comedian, a serious legislator who has proven that he knows how to get things done. He got things done in St. Paul, he's getting things done in the Senate. So, your job now is to welcome my friend and your friend, our Senator, Norm Palmer.